Uh, hi, Sedition community. This is Vlad, Sedition's community manager. And today I have a very exciting interview that uh, I'd like to share with you all. Today I'm sitting down with Mark Tichner. Mark, very nice to be sitting down with you. Very nice to be here. Great. Well, let's get started. And Mark, would you please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, I'm an artist and I'm, I'm based in London. Um, I make I suppose the main sort of drive for my work is working with text. Um, I make a lot of work um, in the public realm. Um, so I'm quite interested in how art can be situated in non-gallery spaces um, and in municipal spaces. Um, and, and, and that's something that I've worked with probably, you know, probably for the last 10 years or so. Uh, and could you just give a general overview of your artistic practice, how you approach your work in a bit more detail? Sure. So, as I as I said, uh, as, as as I mentioned, the main kind of driver or the thing that unifies my practice is is uh, is text, and I think I'm particularly idea um, interested in the idea of how we kind of received uh, receive ideas about ourselves and about our society from outside of us. So that might come from um, you know the media or through advertising or through written history. So quite often, I, I guess I'm trying to reflect upon that, um, quite often making site-specific works as well. So a text might refer to the use of a particular kind of building or site or um, the way that it's used. So, for instance, I'm quite interested in um, using these sort of communal shared sort of spaces. So working in places like stations, um, railway stations, where you have like this kind of huge mass of people passing through um, who are all in close proximity to each other, but might be kind of isolated. So in a way, you know, work in that situation would speak to the idea of like uh, trying to connect people or to think about the sort of situation that they're in of, you know, being amongst others, but being kind of on their own. So reflecting on the kind of, I, I you know, it's this sort of very urban kind of take on art, I suppose. It's very much about the experience of living in a modern city and um, the kind of myriad of influences that are kind of put upon us almost constantly. Okay, thank you for the overview. Um, so my next question would be, if you could just give us a bit of insights, how has your creative practice evolved over time? Like, well, I mean, I, th I think I've really, my creative practice has changed so much um i think you know the big biggest shift i studied painting at central st martins in london um and almost immediately stopped painting as soon as i moved to london i was exposed to sort of different types of contemporary practice um so i got interested in you know wanting to make sound art or video art or installation or you know just everything that you could throw out there um and I think the big change for me came in around 2000, maybe a little earlier when I started to use language in my work. Um, before that, I think my work was quite disparate and I didn't really know how um, to kind of combine my interests. Like I knew I was interested in social, you know, the social position of art or, or the political implications of art, but I didn't really know how to combine that with being interested in physics or you know being interested in literature so that was a big moment for me um I think then the next sort of shift came you know I was involved probably for 10 years or so I guess in a fairly sort of standard kind of gallery museum type practice producing kind of um works and installations um and during that time my first kind of public works happened and I think doing that it felt much more like like I was engaging with the audience that I wanted to. And I always felt that the content of the work was really based on where, where it was located. Um, so the context of the kind of the, the real, the real world and working di directly with that as a, as a material has been, has been really significant um, for me. And I think over, and that's evolved into a practice now where, you know, quite often these public works come out of um, kind of working with communities or working in certain situations and workshops and this whole sort of social side of things. Um, and I've 
been you know I've, I've made I've been you know I would never have imagined 10 years ago I suppose that I would be you know making a, quite a significant number of works which were you know specifically made to be um, made and installed in places like you know psychiatric hospitals where I do a lot of my work now so it's it's been quite a quite a shift <laughs> Okay, thank you. I think that gives us a very good overview of your practice over time. And uh, what I'd like to ask you next, uh, and that's perhaps a bit of a <laughs> basic question, but I think the audience would like to know, what is, the sor so what is the source of your artistic inspiration? What inspires you to create work that you create? Um, that's that's you know, quite a big question. Um, I, I know. Think, <laughs> I think for me um well it's two things i think reading like is mm -hmm. really important to me so i i really enjoy the act of reading and i gather a lot of my text or ideas that become text from that process of reading um that kind of drives me on because obviously you know that's something that goes on forever and also when you know reading can be literature or, or it can be a newspaper or you know it can be this is this the words are kind of found material out in the world and the way that I work is I tend to accumulate these kind of bits of writing or text and they kind of lay dormant in my notebooks for you know it's not I know they're interesting to me if I kind of if they stick with me over a long period of time so sometimes you know if I'm still thinking about something a year after I've read it or two years or three years, I kind of get the feeling that it's something that I can work with. So it can be a little bit of a slow process. Um, but luckily over time, you kind of build up, build up some kind of stock. Um, I guess the other thing is like just constantly trying to reflect on how things are. Um, I mean, in terms of, what I do when I put work out into the world, one way to think about it or one way that I think about it myself is to think about trying to give the text being like a voice and that voice being the kind of almost like a disembodied voice, invisible voice that's the one that's telling you how to behave or telling you how to feel about yourself or telling you, expressing how everyone's feeling or and that keeps shifting. That's something that's really difficult to hang on to. And I think I've still, that I'm quite obsessed by that, I suppose. Like I'm always trying to find a way to kind of reveal some sort of truth of what that presence is. And that's something that never really stops. Thank you. And my next question is going to be more sedition specific. So you're actually one of the first artists to have joined sedition plat sedition's platform. The first works, uh, first works of yours that are on sedition date back to uh, 2012. So that has been quite a long time since then, over 11 years. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, could you please tell me a little bit about how has your experience with sedition been and what interested you about uh, the concept, even in those very early days before sedition became uh, more established? Yeah. In the old, the old days, the early days of uh, video, you know, streaming, and I think first of all, I was really interested in the accessibility of, um, you know, being something being global or being, mm -hmm. you know, not fixed to borders, and also, I think I'm, you know, I'm, I am attracted to the idea of accessibility through work, you know. A, a, the price of works being reasonable to people so people you know don't have to you know be incredibly rich to be able to you know and not even invest just to have something that they like mm -hmm. um and the possibility that you could own video art or um you know and also that the artists were making you know able to make works specifically for the platform so it became, you know, it, it, I, I, I just thought it was a really interesting opportunity, um, and it's been, you know, over the years to work on different projects when that reflect different points of of, of my practice. Um, you know, that I can see how the works that I made ten years ago are different from the ones you know that I'm making now, or the intention slightly different. Um, 
and obviously you know we now in a with the sort of advent of the nft and what that's done to you know there's a, a completely different focus um evolving or you know th th than there was um when we first had the conversation about um you know 11 11 years ago and as the next question i'd like to ask you to tell a little bit actually about the works that you already have on sedition that are in your artist portfolio on sedition would you be able to tell them what caused you to make them etc so yeah, I think generally looking back at the works that I've made for Sedition, the way that it's worked over the years has been, you know, they kind of reflect the project that I'm working on at a particular time. So I think the very first piece I made, um, I was making these kind of metal sculptural reliefs and I was really fascinated by the idea of taking them into kind of um, sort of virtual space and what that meant that we could do. So it was almost like a kind of freeing up of that material process to be able to expand it and have lights within it and, you know, um, play around with the possibilities of, um, you know, uh, reasonably early kind of 3D software. And, yeah, I think, you know, that's that's kind of how it's worked. The various things have always, you know, it's if I, I, there's been a few projects where they've been a kind of, you know, I've been working on a public project and there's a kind of like video iteration of a billboard or um and it, one thing that i enjoy about um I, I i think the way that i approach the different pieces that i always allow myself to be a bit more playful perhaps than i am with um some of the other projects i could treat it in a more experimental way perhaps um and allow myself just to let the process carry me along um and it's also I quite enjoy making sound for my videos and I don't necessarily do that all the time. And I think with, you know, again, with Sedition, I like the format. It reminds me a little bit of like a music video or an ident. So it seems quite kind of, um, you know, it's quite a nice opportunity to make, make sound, you know, make these kind of quite concise videos with sound as well. And I have actually a specific question about two works that you have on Sedition, uh, because they are quite suitable to, let's put it that way, this day and age, as many people would say. Specifically, the world isn't working, and please believe these days will pass. Uh, if I could ask, what inspired them? Okay, yeah, I mean, those. I guess those, those are sort of both become kind of two kind of ongoing kind of works, I suppose. Um, the first version i believe of the world wasn't working i made in 2007 and i made it and it it was like literally i was working on a show in berlin for quite a long time and the financial crash happened just before um and it, it you know i think i maybe tempted fate with the kind of uh using that banner but it was based on the such and such advert for that said labor's not labor isn't working so it was a campaign for the uh tory party um so it was a kind of i felt it was like a updated kind of version of this very famous piece of advertising history i suppose and also social history because i think that that particular um billboard labor isn't working you know is sort of for many of my generation and older is emblematic of the kind of beginning of the that's right period in the uk um and it's one of those things where it, you know, the reality of it is the world is never really quite working as you, you know, as one would hope, or there's something broken at any particular given point in time. So I like the fact it becomes a, like a reflection at different times. You could feel like, oh, this is about, you know, a particular problem, mm -hmm. um, but it could equally be about something else. And there's a thing, I guess it's, Martin Creed uh, made a very, you know, good work, um, you know, and I think I was, you know, the work plus the world plus the work equals the world. Or I've got to have quote that wrong, but, you know, it, I liked he he liked this idea of the world as a kind of ready made, that kind of sense of um, it being a concept, I suppose, as much as being something that you imagine it is, you know, or that you experience the concept of the world. Um, and that, I think that connects actually with the piece that I've made, you know, recently where there's, you know, it's about time in a way, 
And again, it's this concept of history in a certain way. But I, I think we'll get on to that. Um, and the other piece, please believe um, that, again, is sort of a piece that's kind of endured um, a certain amount of time. That was originally made for a, the first version of that I made in 2012 for an exhibition that I had in Toronto in Canada. And it was the title of the exhibition. Um, and I think at that point in time, my focus was on, I think it was a kind of message to myself, maybe it was personal, but also it was to do with the kind of um, the mayor of the city at that, in Toronto at the time. And this they had this particular kind of situation there. So it was a reflection on that. And then I was asked to make a poster version of it for the after the Brexit uh, referendum for the European newspaper and then it took this sort of post-Brexit kind of meaning on as we were in this sort of situation of you know the people who were unhappy with what has happened found you know we found ourselves in this kind of daze about um, you know fog of disbelief I suppose and the sense that you know this is you know, we can't can't believe this is actually happening um and then when the pandemic happened um at the beginning of the pandemic i noticed that the work was being that piece was being shared quite a lot on social media and then i an opportunity came up um to make a kind of billboard version of that and um the it was a you know i had a very quick kind of conversation about it and i thought you know, almost straight away, I, I, this work is obviously resonating with what's happening now. So I made a kind of new new version of that, which kind of was out on poster sites and billboard sites. Um, I worked with an agency called Jack Arts who supported that project, who gave me access to all their kind of um, billboards around the UK, which was amazing. Um, and it was really strange because it's like, you know, I was experiencing it on social media. I didn't see, you know, because we were in lockdown. So this was all kind of happening, happening sort of outside of my kind of control in a way. And that was fascinating because it became, it became like this kind of backdrop, media backdrop for any story to do with COVID for a while. So there was like, you know, just endless pictures and news editorials of the billboards with someone walking past with a mask on, like it, um so that was a really interesting project and then the you know the i made the, the kind of um i guess the kind of an, an animated version of that which became the sedition um um piece so it's kind of interesting that piece now is kind of very much kind of i guess part of the kind of story of the pandemic in a way um so i don't know whether there's you know it's possible there's a kind of another life to it yet to come um as it connects to another story um and i guess very much like the world isn't working you know we're kind of constantly in a state state of thinking like oh i hope tomorrow is better than today fascinating story and thank you for sharing the story of these pieces and definitely they are very much relevant and does look like with the world how it's going they will sadly continue being relevant in the future um but let's talk about the future actually and I'd like to ask you to tell a little bit about your upcoming launch on Sedition of the collection called Those Years and These Days. Would you tell a little bit about that, what inspired you to make it, about the works themselves and the meaning of the works? Sure, sure. Um, I mean, I think it really does connect with what I was saying about, you know, the, the both of those works. I mean, the piece itself, uh, one thing I, I really remember from sort of the pandemic days was this constant feeling and, and and also people saying all the time like you know this is like a year like no other 2020 didn't happen you know um and then you know just it really made me feel i think we all re-experienced time in a way that was very much different um and the passing of time and thinking about things like what happened in a certain year um so that was in my mind and then I yeah and, and also almost just this thing of like this is not this is not this year this is not the year that we thought it was going to be it's something it's something else so that kind of stuck around in my mind I wanted to do something with that and then also earlier in the year 
I kind of I had my 50th birthday so I was kind of I suppose thinking back about about that really and how in a way when you think back about various you remember various days or points or whatever but like how kind of vague my memory might be of certain kind of years um so I was I guess I was thinking about how treacherous kind of memory is um mm. and how trying to pin down memory is like a kind of a difficult uh and you know impossible impossible sort of task and the other thing was i guess again inspired by covid uh, was this this idea that you can be the, t- the time can move at different speeds simultaneously so that in a way you know as you get older you suddenly think oh where did all that where did all those years go but actually the experience of a day can still be very, very long. You know, you can feel like this day is never going to end, but the years, so the years are sort of moving very quickly, but the present is still moving very slowly. So again, thinking about that that kind of contradiction. So I, and I think I mentioned this idea of the sort of the year as a kind of ready-made and, um, again I, I i don't know it was it's was kind of a joke in a way you know i started off with this thinking about um magritte and the treachery of images and the sort of you know this is not a pipe and i thought well you know can you apply that to time so in a way you know it became a simple kind of matter to you know for that to become you know it's not 20 2020 or it's not 2021 or 1973 or 1978 and as i was kind of going through this process of you know thinking about my 50 years I thought well you know this could be an interesting way to make a kind of a, an, an addition I suppose to make a sort of unique work for each of those um each of those years each kind of and for each of those you know those it's interesting when you you know you think about what the meaning of a particular year is you think about things that happen to you personally but there's obviously like you know significant events that happened um so someone might expect you know say oh you know, I don't know, 19, uh, 1979 is the kind of, you know, beginning of the Thatcher years. But they might also say, oh, you know, that's Phil Flynn, that's the year they met their wife or, you know, they had a bereavement or their football team, you know, won the league or, what you know, the, all of these things are kind of sig- significant in a way. So in terms of how the work looks, I wanted to play upon this kind of idea of something intangible, um, so the kind of text is it, it's kind of appearing and disappearing quite quickly it's almost like a an ink blot that kind of appears and then dissolves and the backgrounds are, are, are kind of made from uh well some footage i shot of the sky uh in, in dungeness um and kind of also some sort of images of um sh- solar kind of um images of shooting stars and so the, it, the the text is a, in a kind of shifting kind of landscape, which is kind of, it's quite uncertain as to whether, you know, the colours are quite weird. Like it's, you know, it, it's quite unnatural. Um, it's not really clear whether it's day or night or whether, you know, the sun's coming up or going down. So and I, I wanted them, them to feel very visual, but I also wanted them to, fit, you know, an aesthetically very colourful, but I also wanted to, to have this element of it being quite um, you know pr- primarily being a kind of an amorphous space like a space which is kind of like memory you know it's difficult to hang on to and i have actually one very specific question about the collection um so it consists of 51 unique works and the last one of those works is it's not 2023 but as we are speaking now it is very much still 2023 so I was just curious. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, it felt really important to have that one in because I think when we think about, um, you know, we, we with the others, we can abstract it and say, you're right, it's not those years are gone that's happening. But then with that one in particular, with the present year, I think it was to do with the idea of, you know, more of the concept of what <laughs> a year is. What's this year supposed to be? Is it supposed to be the year that this happens or... Um, and also that quickly, you know, in eight months will be it will be done, it will be gone, like it will be. Um, but yeah, I think having the present in there as well as the past was important. 
Understood, yes. It was just a question I personally had about the collection, and I'm sure quite many of the viewers might have the similar question as well. Um, so uh, now I'd just like to ask uh, a question. So there is now a lot of developments happening that are heavily affecting the art world. And the most recent, of course, that what would be the interview if I didn't ask you what your thoughts were on the developments in the NFT space and what uh, the on the latest developments in the AI space. Because everyone is talking about them, so I kind of have to ask you about this. So what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I think, I mean, there's so many, I mean, I think the AI and the NFT thing, for me, this the AI question is bigger. Mm -hmm. um, but the NFT, I mean, the NFT thing has, has been really interesting to see um, in terms of, I mean, I was I made an NFT as part of a kind of uh, project quite early on. Um, and to see even how that evolved in months into something completely different was just crazy. Um, and I must, you know, it's not something that I've really actively pursue i i've made so, several nfts for various projects but you know it's really interesting to see how it's i think for artists who are coming from a kind of fine art background i think we there's this sort of sense that almost you know that it's, it's the nft community is almost something completely different i think it felt you know it has this sort of independent independence in its own language and i guess the technological side of it i'm not um you know to see i guess moving away um or moving further into things like generative um works and kind of um code based works and you know this really exploring the medium that that's all kind of i guess now i'm not something you know it's not something that i i i feel completely um like I'm aware of it and I am still kind of part of that community to a certain extent, but I'm, I'm kind of like watching what's happening from the outside a little bit. I'm a bit like, maybe I'm showing my age, but um, also like I, I, I kind of like, I mean, one of the ideas with this work was to make an edition of 51, but there would be an additional one for each piece. Like I still like that idea of, um, you know, sc not scarcity is not right, but you know, sort of a, within additions this idea of like uniqueness i think is still kind of important um and i know that obviously connects to the nft blockchain um in a, in a different way um in terms of ai i mean it it's just i mean who knows where we'll be in a few months time it's so fast moving and for me you know i'm still very much involved in kind of physical kind of processes a lot of the time and working directly with people. So um, I'm kind of, I don't know, I think we, we're going to see what happens, aren't we, with this? It's like we've, it's a, we've, we've committed ourselves to this grand social experiment on ourselves and um, we don't really know what the outcome will be. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's something which is going to cut through every aspect of our sort of of our civilizations as it as it were and what it does to arts and literature and news reporting and politics we, we don't know i think it's potentially you know extremely worrying mm -hmm. potentially of course a game changer across the field like you mentioned yeah mm -hmm. yeah well let's see and let's hope the world doesn't continue like your artwork and that you know 23 and then there's no more so let's hope you know hopefully not <laughs> <laughs> the world continues onwards. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, my final question, Mark, is, you know, I think it's quite apposite to finish with discussing the future. So what's the future for you? What's the future for Mark Titchener? Um, so I think immediately I will be continuing to work on my kind of, I've got a number of my kind of public projects I'll be working on. Um, I've got... Um, and again, this sort of ongoing relationship that I have with, um, particularly working with mental, uh, particular in mental health settings with mental health charities, so producing sort of site specific work um, for for those kind of audiences. Um, so I guess as it always is with me, I just keep going, <laughs> just keep going, and uh, you know, 
I, I'm I'm kind of I, I I'm a firm believer in like you, you know if you keep going and you keep making things um you generate possibilities and I like to I like not I like the idea that you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow I like the idea that I don't know where the work is going to go and I'm trying to, you know I still after all these years try and be a little bit free I suppose you know just try and try and experiment I keep thinking maybe you know maybe it's time to stop working with text to maybe do something different but I never quite get there so uh, we'll, we'll see okay well thank you so much Mark thank you so much for sitting down with me and sharing your insights uh, and yeah looking forward to the release of your collection thank you it's good to talk